the Ultimate Tank build in collaboration with Aquamedic. Okay guys, not only is my little masterpiece done, um, I'm pretty much done with uh, the build. Alright, so my little painting will be used to cover up all these cords. Boom. Alright guys, well here's my tank. I just got it set up about one or two days ago fully. And the reason I say one or two days ago, because the tank was running for like the past three days now, um, but I had a few pieces of equipment, last piece of equipment that I had to install, and, and we'll get to that. So let's talk about the tank. So here is my 90 gallon Reef Savvy tank. Um, it does have uh, the Starfire glass, and it has the Phantom bottom, which I love. Now it doesn't have the ghost overflow, it has the hybrid overflow and you guys may remember I did go through a little bit of a headache because um, the width of the stand is not the same width as uh, the overflow so I had to do a little bit of cutting into the side of the stand so I can make enough room uh, to put in the pipe. It was really hard to get in there so I have, um, I used some wood glue to patch it up and now I just have to sand it and Aquarium Wood Products did send me the paint for it. Uh, I have I think about probably a hundred and twenty pounds of real reef rock. I, I really like it. I have used it um, before um, uh, but you know I, I've always liked it and uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit more in depth into why I wanted to use real reef rock and uh, the sand that I'll be using. My sand is not here yet, but it should be here tomorrow. So I'm not going bare bottom. A lot of people on Facebook ask me that. Um, and if you guys want to follow uh, the tank build in real time, you can always follow me on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Thomas Vision Reef. But um, I do like the bare bottom look. Uh, the only way I would like to do it is if I can grow corals on the bottom, just like World War Corals does. Um, but I do like sand sifters, so um, I, I really want sand. 
so uh, on top of the tank, I'm using Kessel A360WEs. And uh, you just can't beat that shimmer. You can just see it up there. For my pump, I am using the uh, EcoDrift 8.0. A few videos ago, in the comments, a few of you compared the EcoDrift to the j -Bow, and you're not entirely wrong. Aquamatic admits that the EcoDrift pumps are quite similar to the j -Bow pumps. One similarity is that they use the same housing for their controllers. However, a lot of the electronics inside the controller are different. Here's one thing that Aquamatic wanted to make clear. If you have a j -Bow and wanted to improve it, the EcoDrift is what you would get. With that said, here are the key differences between the EcoDrift and the j -Bow. The EcoDrift was built with higher quality materials. The EcoDrift is German design and a lot of its parts are made in Germany. It is 20% stronger than the j -Bow pumps. Its flow rate ranges between 1,056 gallons per hour to 2,115 gallons per hour. The one I have, which as I said is the EcoDrift 8.0, is rated for 210 gallon tank. Aquamatic went to extra mile on EcoDrift and made sure that there were rubber mounts on every point where the pump touches the cradle, which reduces noise and vibration. Same goes for the pump's magnet and impellers, and by the way, it has a patented impeller design. It also runs cooler and is more energy efficient. Aquamatic told me today for the past six months since the EcoDrift has been out, their failure rates have been zero, and still it comes with a one-year warranty. The j -Bow at this time has virtually no warranty. Hmm, I could go up against the j -Bow, but maybe next week I'll put the EcoDrift 8.0 against a Vortec MP40, and then I'll let you guys decide which one wins. Right now, I just have fresh water in the tank. I just wanted to uh, test for leaks and things like that. So, um, I guess you guys want to see the equipment room. And before we do that, let me just show you what I have under the stand. So inside of the stand, I don't have any of my filtration, of course. I do have a lot of my um, equipment that I use to, uh, you know, do maintenance on my tank. Um, I have a lot of my PVC and fittings in here. Um, I have my new Aquamedic scraper right here and uh, <laughs> I've had these bio balls I don't know probably oops sorry guys probably for about um, I don't know maybe seven years if anybody can think of a use for bio balls uh, that I can use I, I hate to throw anything away but a lot of you guys are probably the same way so um, guys can think of a use for, for those things let me know. Okay, guys. So you guys seen my little art to hide the cords. I do have to do a little bit more uh, cord management. Uh, these cords right here will be neatly tucked on the side. And these, I'm going to put them in a little cord holder. Those cords on the back wall. Uh, but there's nothing really I can do. Those cords have to come out of the sump and while we're on that subject why don't we talk about the sump so this is the aquamatic reef station i have it open for you guys as i prepared to um do this little video for you guys but it it, it is completely enclosed in glass so eventually i'm going to have this come turn into a smaller tube so i can bring it in the top right here I want to show you guys but for right now it's a little bit too thick to fit in there so that's why I just had it out and I'm not no need to run it right now so we'll put this right back on the top all right so this top glass just slides right on So these two pieces, to put these back on, this one, the front one, you uh, sit them in the middle, and then you pull this out, 
as you pull them out, you can get them back in their slots. I have this one in the wrong slot. There we go. Alright. And boom. They are back on. And it is closed. Get out of here. So, I do have to refill it with some more water. But um, I'm just testing the system and before I fill it up with more water, I want to um, get those uh, additional check valves installed just to make sure I don't have overflows in here and overflows uh, in the tank. I haven't used a skimmer uh, yet really. Um, it does need to be, uh, the sump need, does need to be filled up so the skimmer will fill up all the way. Uh, there is their um, 18 watt UV sterilizer by Aquamedic. This is their multi-reactor, and I'll do videos on that. I'm still deciding what to put on that, uh, in that. Then here, you will see their phosphate filter, in which I do not have running. Uh, what else we have here? Uh, we have the ozone kind of reactor right there that I don't have hooked up. That is the last thing that I have to ha hook up. We also have the uh, coke reactor right there which is hooked up but it's not running yet because there's no need to run it uh, here is their um, uh, auto top off unit by aquamedic and i do have it i'm gonna have it running and this is my old uh, ehan uh, nano tank so that is going to be my reservoir for my fresh water and i will be making an acrylic top for it and so that is also hooked up, but it's not cut on. Here's uh, my doser. And um, the only thing that I have hooked up for the doser right now is the cult reactor. Uh, that's what, what's going to be uh, pulling the water from my reservoir into um, the cult reactor and then back into the sump. And then, of course, I'll be running a, a few other chemicals. <sighs> So, uh, here is my Reef Keeper light. I will be uh, moving to another controller. Well, you know what? I, I won't say I will be moving to another controller. I'm going to keep this, uh, but I will be adding another controller. So, stay tuned for that, guys. Um, has some things in the works. I think you guys will like it. So, uh, what else can I show you guys in here? So, as I said, a lot of those cords back there, uh, they will be put in like a, basically a tube just to hide them and make them a little bit prettier. But like I said, guys, I just got the tank um, up and running uh, really like two days ago. So uh, I, I hate having cords everywhere, and I try to do a good job of putting all the cords up. Um, I added uh, two pieces uh, of equipment yesterday, and so I just haven't been able to really put those cords up, which is uh, the doser right here, um, or the auto top off right here, and then the doser what I added about uh, yesterday and the day before so um, I, you know I still got to get those cords pretty and uh, of course all these cords back here will be looking nice and pretty you, you won't even really be able to tell that it's all the mess oh okay so I can show you guys this right here okay so as you see like I said I have to get the rest of these cords put up but you know I have everything labeled just in case I'm not here and my wife needs to uh, see see something um, that is my return pump right there. That's running from their uh, DC pump by Aquamedic. Then here I have the skimmer pump. And they're all controllable. And then the last one right here is the phosphate filter. The pump for the phosphate filter. And I do not have that running right now. Alright. So what else? I do I have here oh now if you guys are wondering uh, why I have this right here is because I wanted to mark where I'm going to put I think I'm gonna put it there but I think where I'm gonna put um, a check valve and so I think I'm gonna put a check valve there so I just have it marked uh, what else oh 
And uh, of course, we can't miss out on this guy right here, which is uh, Aquamedics Refugium. Uh, pretty cool. Now, if there's one <laughs> flaw in my design of this room, I'm really happy with it. Um, but if there is one flaw to the design of this room, is <laughs> this right here. I should have made it about an uh, inch higher. So when I take off the top for the refugium, I have to turn this, you know, I have to pull this out um, so I can get to it. Um, so I can take off the top. So that is the one flaw to my design of the room. But other than that, I'm really happy how this turned out. And so what I'm thinking I may do, I have a couple options, um, is I may cut this here. I'm not sure if I really need the room right there, so I may just cut that so I can get that top off easily. Uh, but I'm still thinking about it, and like I said, I can't, for right now at least, I can just turn it to the side. Uh, but once I get sand and rock, I won't want to do that. So um, I'll find a better option. And here are all the products I'll be dosing. On the tank for Aquamedic. And like I said, guys, this is just a quick walkthrough of everything I have set up. And uh, this will be my uh, quarantine tank. And then, of course, you know, New York is my hometown. Is that the way? I have the city of New York back when the Twin Towers were still around. Hanging right there. So uh, let's see, is there anything else I haven't showed you guys yet? Well, of course, I mean, if I have the Reef Keeper, I do have the Reef Keeper uh, module right there. Oh, I, there's something I forgot. Right here, I am using Aquamedics, if you can see it clearly, Aquamedics uh, probe holder. And that is holding my two probes for my pH and my um, temperature for the Reef Keeper light. All right, let's see. Is there any other equipment in here? So, oh, well, so I have a ball valve here. And so the, the refugium is completely run through gravity so uh, this now and, and let me kind of walk you through why I did it this way so this is the return to the tank so the water uh, exit my sump through my sump through the UV sterilizer and then comes and then hits the refugium so now why did I do it this way well, because, uh, first of all, I wanted the refugium not to have to utilize a pump. But then secondly, I wanted when the water comes back to the, the, um, the tank, I didn't want all my copepods or anything else to um, have to go through the skimmer and then ca get caught up in the filter sponges. So um, I decided to just go straight back to the tank. Now, what I may do is I may take the UV sterilizer off of the return and then put it, uh, hook it up to another pump on the other side of um, the skimmer. And the reason is, is, you know, some people say that a lot of the, um, you know, the good uh, bacterias or, um, Copepods, when they run through it, they can get killed through the UV sterilizer. So what I'm, so I may just have the refugium go straight back to the tank after. So now, I, what I can talk about is um, I do have the sump, I, I guess, or the pump return going back to the tank going slow. I believe in slow flow. Um, where every, and the reason why I believe slow flow is I believe if it goes through everything at a slower pace, then you can, your, your equipment 
is going to be able to process more of the water than just the water hitting the sump and most of it just going straight back to the tank it's going to go in a lot slower and all of your water is going to get processed so some people may have a different opinion on that but uh, that's the way i like to do things with a nice slow flow stay tuned for next week's episode when i get a new package from aquamedic and i compare the ecodrift 8.0s to the vortec mp40s <laughs> Tank build in collaboration with Aquamatic.